Now, we've been talking about the 15 irrefutable laws of kingdom prosperity. You know, family, in fact, I'm actually done with the book here, really. I, I just need to now fine-tune it and finalize with the publishers. Um, then, obviously, we'll get it distributed, so I'll let you know. It's a very important book. Why? Because God has taught me some principles for his people. God's people, including me, when I came into in the ministry, uh, Liz and I were running this business and we got this big contract. And we were told, if you want to be in ministry, you must not have any business. Don't run business because business is not part of God's agenda. You know, you live by your tithe as a minister. I was taught that. But that is a lie. Until I went to study the Bible myself, and I realized that Jesus says, occupy and do business until I come. The church of Jesus Christ, as long as we think, as long as our minds, our idea, ideas are powerful tools. I've taught you about ideas. Ideas can make you poor or they can make you rich. What you think about things, that's your ideas. You can have ideas about money, ideas about relationships, ideas about, about churches. Ideas are very dangerous. Some of you today are leaving somebody else's idea. The people have already died and you are leaving that idea. For example, the idea of apartheid. The, 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 the instigators of apartheid are already dead and gone. And some people are still struggling with it today. And the people have already died. Because ideas can outlive the person. Very powerful tools. Very powerful tools. Now, when you come into the kingdom of God, I didn't say into the church. The church is a training room for citizens of a country. The church is a training room for you how to reign in a new country. How many of you guys have ever been to, you know, I know some of you might have been, if, how many of you guys have ever lived in Dubai before you lived in Dubai? How many of you need, know that if you have to immigrate there, you need some teaching about it? Hello? How many of you know if you had to live there permanently, you have to go to a place where you are taught these are the laws. There are certain things in Dubai you cannot do. Or even if you go to Saudi Arabia and those places, they will tell you certain things you can't do. Maybe like for ladies, you can't show your hair, you can't do this, you can't do In Dubai you can, but I'm saying in other Arabic countries, there are certain laws they have there. Because it's another kingdom, it's not South Africa. So if you came from South Africa, you immigrated to that kingdom, you're going to have to go to a class where you are taught how they work there. You have to be taught their tax laws. You're going to have to be taught their, their, their road systems. You're going to have to be taught their financial systems. You're going to have to be taught their, their bank account systems. When you go there, suddenly you don't see any APSA or FNB when you walk in there or Standard Bank. You see some Al oh, Barak, 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 Rak, Rak, somewhere. <laughs> so you have to now learn when you see Al oh, Barak, that's a bank. You have to now learn how to open that bank account. Hello? So, what happens to a South African who says, no, I don't want to learn. I'll just operate like I operated in my country. What happens to that person? That person will be in a successful country and still stay poor. Why? Because they have not conformed to the new laws of that country. So, many of us, when we're born again, we think we joined a religion, we came into the church, and, uh, and we're just taught, you know, Keep on holding on, brother. Hold on. We even sing the songs. Bambalela. I don't know that song. <laughs> you know that song. <laughs> That's why I need to get you awake. It's a nice song. You know, it's not talking about hold on to Jesus. It's talking about hold on to Jesus in the sense of hold on to him. But there are songs where we are saying, you know, Oh, heaven, earth is not my home. I'm just passing by. If heaven is not my home, oh, God, what shall I do? The angels are calling me to heaven, to you, Lord. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. I don't want to outshine the choir, so let me keep quiet. <laughs> you know... 
I, I, can't, I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Because we've got an idea that heaven is home. Heaven is not home. Earth is home. The Bible says, before men, before there was sin on earth, God created them and God said unto them, have dominion there on earth, not up here in heaven. And God sent Adam to the earth. He did not send him to the earth to go back to heaven. He sent him here to rule. So the idea that we must go to heaven is an idea of an ill-taught human being. Why do we go to heaven if we die? Your, your folks that died before you are in heaven if they were born again. Why are they in heaven? They are in heaven because there's a program that we call rapture. It's a kingdom program. It's a kingdom program to resettle men back on earth. So when they get born again, they go to heaven, they are in a holding place. Go read the book of Revelation. You see in Revelation chapter 19, we are all coming back on white horses together with Jesus. We're going to see us coming down and we're going to destroy those armies that is going to surround Jerusalem. We're going to be part of that crew that will come with him. Do you understand? After the great tribulation, we will come in down with him. And I know I'm going to be right next to Jesus and I'm going to be talking to you guys in the back. So now I'm just... <laughs> but we are all going to come down. Down here. And we're going to destroy, we're going to rule. Jesus is a ruler of a kingdom. So this is the thing. Because we are not taught about these things, we want to, like I said last week, we want to hear a message that encourages us. Because why do we need encouragement? Because we just have to hold on for a little bit until he comes. We're just going to have to hold on for, for, for a few more years until maybe I die. So the pastor must get sweat when he's preaching until he's lost his voice because I just want to feel better for, about myself before I'm up there. No, the Bible says, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Otherwise, we are custodians of the blessing of God. And wherever we go on the planet, we must distribute that blessing. We are born to distribute the blessing of God. We are not born to suffer. We are not born to be poor. We are not born to have lack. We are a kingdom a nation of people. Let me tell you something. The king of Dubai, who, it will never be heard. You have not seen one poor Arab. Show me an Arab who's begging on the roads. One Arab from the UAE. Show me one UAE citizen who's a beggar. You won't find them. In fact, in Dubai, there are no beggars. If you see a beggar on the street, you ask them, where are you from? Deben. <laughs> you don't see one UAE. Honestly, Frachis, really, go, go, go look. Go and see, you don't see one beggar in UAE because the reflection of the citizens is a direct reflection of their king and his power. Whatever the citizens does is a reflection of the throne, the monarchy. The, the, he, 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 you can't even, if you are in UAE, you don't wash dishes. If you are a, a citizen of UAE, no washing dishes. Because if you're washing dishes, the sign that the president is broke. I told you last week, people that drive in taxis, do you know UAE, they've got a Rolls Royce for a taxi. Here, people. But people wet their pants and, and, and whatever. When they see guys driving a Rolls Royce, they want to say, why is he driving a car like that? In Dubai, it's a taxi. It's going to Adams and back. Taxi. Hello, please. <laughs> taxi. Let me tell you something. Why is the citizens, why does the president want the citizen to sit in an air-conned Rolls Royce and it's a taxi? Because where he sits reflects the throne. God doesn't want you guys the way you are. He wants you to change. But your ideas is short-circuiting what the Father wants you to, be, to have. Some of you, even though you are born again, you're still living under your old rule in terms of your ideas. This is who I am. This is what I believe. I go to church. At least someone will bury me when I die. I'm not here in the burying business. I'm here in the resurrecting business. I'll mess you up on your feet. I think I've died now, and I owe so many people now, at least so they don't have to pay the square lady. Call Pastor Wellington. I'll come then, I'll wake you up again. 
And the moment you open up your eyes, you see Paul, Jimmy, John, everybody who owed the most money, they are looking in your coffee like that. So the pastor killed me again. No. Anyway, there are some scriptures I want to show you quickly. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Why does what God wants to, to teach to, to us to teach people to be... You, listen, who owns the streets in Devon? Honestly, how many of you have been to Point Road? I don't know what they call it now. I think it's called Kotomu, Koka, Kiko, something like that. I forgot. I don't know the name, but the names have changed. Okay. Huh? I don't know the names of the roads. But anyway, it used to be called Point Road before. So if you go to Point Road... Show me Christians that own the streets in Point Road. The streets are being owned by drug dealers. Who's the owner of the streets? They own the streets. You know why? Because a person without money can't own no street. The drug dealers buy all the cops. The Christians are saying, we are only way to heaven. We don't need to have anything on earth. You know, people, we don't need to have anything. We just, that's a lie from the devil. Let me tell you something. Nobody here starts a business not to make profit. I started my business to be profitable, not to just make a living until Jesus comes. No. Because the church thinks we are just in a waiting place until Jesus comes. Oh, come tomorrow, Jesus. Please come, come. You are selfish. What about 20 people around your block that needs to be born again? Yeah. And you can't go there and tell them about Jesus because you're too hungry. But the drug dealer comes in there playing. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. And he's got this drop top. He comes in there and he's got the money. He'll buy the kids. They can be, I don't wanna, they, they can be shouting Jesus every day, but a drug dealer comes with the money. He can buy them off with that money because the ones who own the money own the streets. A poor church has got no voice. So this is one of the graces Jesus died for. Watch this. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, I, I didn't like that. Jesus was what? How, oh, Pastor, it means I'll be rich in heaven. Why do you need riches in heaven? There ain't no houses to rent and bonds to pay. How, oh, Pastor, he was rich yet for your sake. For your sakes, you and me. He became poor that you through his poverty might be rich. In other words, he exchanged the grace of of poverty with riches. You had the grace. That is a grace, you see. If it's a grace, it's something you have to be taught and operate in. It's a grace. For, you know, the grace, that word is very important. Jesus left the grace for the rich. But he did not leave the rich on you. He left the grace. If you don't know how to operate in the grace, you'll never get the rich. Do you understand? It's a grace. So Jesus said, I became poor, so this has to be taught in the church. Deuteronomy 15.4, New Living Translation. I'm going to run through scriptures because of time. This one I want us to read together. One, two, three, read. They should be no poor among you. We'll stop there. Read again from the beginning. They should be no poor among you. Read again. They should be no poor among you. Look at your neighbor and read looking at them. Man, yeah, let me I fly for fly for you. you see, let me tell you. Say for you. I say for you. Ah. Ek. Ek say for you. Okay. Ek say for you. I, now you hear me. I'm saying to you. I'm saying to you here. You know. You know. I'm. I'm. You know. <laughs> we'll talk about that next week. Don't miss next week. <laughs> there should be no poor among you. That's what the kingdom of heaven is saying to the people that are born again. For the Lord your God will greatly bless you in the land he is giving you as a special. But what land is this when Jesus is born again? When you are born again through Jesus. When I say Jesus is born again, I mean he went to die. Do you know Jesus he lost his righteousness when he went to the grave? Jesus had to be born again in hell so that he can give it to you. He took your sins, went into that place, and for three days he bent he came as a born again man and he gave it to you. Exchanged sin to give you that. So now, there should be no poor people among you. But why are we fighting poor Christians? Because of their ideas, philosophy. This thing. 
No, Pata, this thing of giving, giving, giving is a, is, is a scheme. Who told you that? All the people that told you that they were broke, they were there having nothing, but you listened to them, you see, because you do not want to come into a classroom like this that is teaching you how to, res to be a heaven citizen and be taught. You have to be taught in a city, you know, in, a, in this place how to, to operate heaven. You have to listen to everything heaven says for you to, to be able to, um, to succeed. So God says there should be no poor among you. But why, how come it is we're having Christians that are struggling in life? Is it God or is it the Bible is not true or is it them? Others, if the Bible is not true, we've just wasted time here. The Bible is true. I've seen it work. When I came in to be born again, I decided to bring to church what I call a delete button. I come with a delete button. Some of your hard drives are so stored up that you don't even want to reset that hard drive. It's my hard drive. You have it. Some of you need a hard drive reset. There's so much information we're told. You mustn't have anything. The church steals from people. The church this, the church that, the church this, the church this, the church. And we think you can never give to God. Of course you can never give to God. Giving is not giving to God. Giving is a training tool. The kingdom of God, you can't work for anything because all of it belongs to the king. You're going to read them in the book. Kingdoms, kings own everything in a kingdom. It's not democracies where they say work for what you have is yours. In the kingdom, there is no title deed for, for, your, house, for your land. You don't, you don't own, you know, you don't own. Uh, if, you, if you bought under King Gudu's or the, well, you know, the Zulu land, if you buy from the Gonyama Trust, you're going to realize that you can own the building there, but you don't own the land. The land will always be the king's land. Why? Because in kingdoms, the king owns everything. He gives it to you. That's why when you want land, you go to Queen's husband. And he's a chief, chief or something. You go to the chief and you talk to him nicely and you tell them the land you want and he takes you to the land and if that land is not someone's land and, and they, they tell you how to get the land, most of the times you are given the land. I mean, I was offered many land in my pastorate. You can have this one. They even want to give you a wife too, sometimes. You know, it was too late because I was already married. But, you know, you go to Zululand, they like your smile. They call it, they call they like seven maidens. Come here, come here, come here. They stand there and say, which one do you like? <laughs> this one, that one, that one, that one. You know, some of you guys I know, you you need to be, come right. Says, I want them all. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. No, no. So they say, which one do you, so they, they how come... Someone said, they can't make women like animals. You can't just take which one you want. In the kingdom, the king owns those girls. So he can give you which one ever he wants. You can't understand it because you've got the Western mindset. Everything you are taught, you are taught by America and Hollywood. But in kingdoms, kingdoms, kings own everything. So in a kingdom, things are not worked for, they are given. That's why the Bible says, seek first the kingdom and all these things shall be added. Because in kingdoms we are, things are added. So when I'm giving money, I'm not trying to buy God or to donate to a church or to make the church pay rent. I am giving so that I can be trusted with more. You've been faithful with a little. Now you are made ruler over many, much. Why? Because I could see how you handled the 5,000 rand. Now I'll give you 50. It's not an issue of the church needs or the pastor needs. It's an issue of I need to trust you with what I gave you so I can give you more responsibility. Do you understand? And the reason why I give is because Pastor Jerome Liberty said, and we've got all the messages, uh, Kayla, we have them on YouTube, eh, on the conference. If you want to go on YouTube, they're all free, so you can go on YouTube and subscribe and you can get all. But it's really powerful, the me message from Pastor Jerome Liberty, where he said, the reason why I give is because of my grandchildren. Because I don't want my grandchildren to fight the devil's eye of what. They have to go through the problems I, I don't want. I, you know, it's too much. So for me, all I fight for, I'm looking at the other generation. So there shall be no poor people among you. Okay, let's go to the next scripture. Proverbs 28, 22. I, 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 I'm getting this. I haven't even gotten to the next point. The stingy are eager to get rich and unaware that poverty awaits them. Kingdom language again. This is not church language. 
kingdom language. Because church language, the pastor hits us with that word. You're stingy, hey! It's not about that. See, that's why we mess it up. So we come and we shout over people because sometimes even a minister doesn't understand where, what he's been graduated to. He doesn't know he's in a kingdom. So now it's, it's time to press people. So people feel like, you know, you're pushing me to. But the stingy are eager to get it. What he's trying to say here, in the kingdom, when I give you resources and you get stingy with them, you'll be eager to get more, but you are now aware that you're going to get poverty because I couldn't trust you with what I gave you. It's kingdom language. King's language. So the sins you get eager to be rich, but in a way that they're poverty in a way that this is God talking. God is saying he doesn't want his poor, poor family. We want to build a church. How many of you know that they won't feel so if we go there on the land, you know, maybe we should be like the shepherd folk. Because that's not the one I was driving there. So they just get any place. They can be on a traffic light somewhere in the church is happening. They got their speakers there, and the guys with a white garment there, and the present worship is taking place. Then the guys preaching, then they're having church. Do you think, how, how, don't you think, guys, Trinity, we just, you know, find ourselves a space there? You see, we can't because you think you're too cool, so you want aircon and all. You don't want to suffer for Jesus. The stingy are eager to get rich, and they are now aware that poverty awaits, uh, awaits them. So God doesn't want his people poor. He's saying the reason why they are poor is because they are stingy. That's all he's saying. I, I want to see how they work with it so I can trust them with more. And, and trust can take time. How many of you guys trusted your, if you married here, you trusted your, your boyfriend the first day you met her? You don't know. Some of these guys look like suspects. He might not be a suspect, but his look, you can think, mm, 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 he's a suspect. See, so you need another week and another week and another week because trust takes time. How many of you have ever been hurt by somebody? It's amazing how you have to let them come in slowly back because you want to watch them, isn't it? That's why tithing can take years before you, it, you see the results. It can be years. Even giving. Ah, oh, pastor, I want to give today and see tomorrow. Or try it with planting anything. It doesn't work like that. You plant an apple tree today, you eat it, the apple tomorrow, never. There's a process. Let's go to Proverbs 13, 18. Whoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame. But whoever his correction is honored. Let me tell you, family, I don't care how many rambangandanga shaka zulu you do. If you're not disciplined, you'll never prosper. Discipline is key. Yesterday I went to a place where they called me. They said, you need to be there at 8. Don't tell me to be there at 8. Pastor Lee tells you nicely, don't talk to dad about this. You'll be on time. <laughs> so tell me, be there at 8. He said, okay, I was there at 8. I had to open the door because the people that told me to come at 8 were not even there at 8. They came 9 o'clock. I was there at 8. And I figured out, these guys are running an institution, an educational institution that is renowned like that, and they can't make time. I prayed, in, I, and thank God I was there alone, so I prayed in that, in that assembly alone. I was praying, rah, rah, rah. I was there, honestly, praying in the spirit. And I said, Father, if these people can't keep time, are these the future leaders of South Africa? We can't even keep time. Just 8 o'clock. We, we, don't, we don't need any. Hey, just be there at 8. No, you don't have to pay. Just be there. We can't keep time. Never marry a person who can't keep time. If they promise you I'm coming to pick you up at 9 and there they come at 11 with an excuse or smiling. <laughs> you must just open the curtain and say bye. <laughs> Never come back here again. Amen? Some of you, you must understand you are born again people. Born again people don't do things that unsaved people do. Your marker for love is not based on hollyhood. Your marker for love is not sex. Do you understand? Your marker for love is serving God together. So if you want to get married, you have to work in this person serve God together with me. We're going to wait for God until we are married. We're not gonna, we are not going to make sure we are always in public. We're make, you, you, you set parameters. That's how you win in these things. Right. Yes. Amen. And you keep time. Some people can't even keep time. Shame. How do you think they're going to even keep their promise to you? 
Proverbs 10, 15. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city, but poverty is the ruin of the poor. God hates it, man. God hates poverty. All right. I want to give you a few scriptures that you can write down and, 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 and look at. I want to show you why 15 irrefutable laws of prosperity is so important to God. Because a poor church has got no voice. And I showed you a few things. I need to go quickly through this because there's some stuff here I want to talk to you about the eight laws of the Creator. Thank you very much. You're doing such a, a brilliant job. Um, Abby there at the back. Amen. All right. I'm gonna, there we go. I'm good here. Ah, thank you. Finally. Last week we looked at the fact that I've got six minutes, so I'm going to go through all the laws because next week I've got something new. So I can't stay on one place. Yes, you can appreciate. For there were some things that are really, really important we have to go through. Nothing exists without a creator. People are looking for a creator. The number three there, we're talking about the fact that the three things men are searching for. Number one, we found out that men are searching for a, what you call utopia. A place where there is no, all religions are searching for this place where there is no crying no more. And people are searching for a purpose, and all people are searching for a creator. Now, these are very important things for, for, for you to understand in order for you to get into your place of your wealth. Nothing exists without a creator. There's no way you are here by a big bang. Tell me, it's a big bang. Take your watch today, dismantle everything in your watch. Take your watch, dismantle everything. Then I want you to give it a big bang on the floor and see if all the parts are going to come together. One will be there, one will be there. Nothing will ever come together the big bang. So nothing exists without a creator. That's number one. Number two. What is that going here? Just press for me at the back there, maybe number two if you can. Amen. I'm failing to, um, to go down to the next one. It could be me or it could be something there at the back. Amen. All right, so, so ah, finally. Ah, Frahis. A creator brings into existence what was previously non-existent. Okay, very important to know. I don't have time to go through all these laws. So if you guys can press even in the back, just the next one, because I'm having an issue getting them there. A creator creates with a forethought, purpose, and intention. No one here, your face, every... Nobody can call anyone here ugly. Because everyone here has got a different look to the other person. They might look a, a bit weird to you, <laughs> but God, every product has got an intention made with it. Amen. So when you pray, you have to know I'm intentionally created. Very important. Four, every product is sustained from the materials of which it was extracted. Now, this is very important for you to understand, family. When God was creating the heavens and the earth, God said to the earth or to the sky, he spoke into the sky and he said, stars, moon, sun, he called them forth out of the atmosphere. When God pl uh, created plants, he spoke to the ground and he called the plants forth out of the ground. Remember the mist used to water the ground and God calls the plants out of the ground. When God wants to make fish, God speaks to the water and he says, water team up with every living creature and the water produces fish. Amen. If you remove a fish out of the water, the water is the substance of which it was extracted. If you remove fish out of the water, that fish will lack purpose and that fish will die. If you go home and you take your plant out of the soil, that plant will lack purpose, that plant will die. That plant will only have purpose as long as it's in the ground of which it was taken out of. If you take the sun out of the atmosphere and you put it under the ground, that sun is, in Africans, do it. Dead. In Zulu feel it. It's dead. You know why? Because it's been taken out of the, it, the material which it was created. When God created man, he says, man in our image, be. He spoke out of himself, and men were extracted out of the core of God. When a man lives outside of the connection with God, he dies and he lacks purpose. 
The only way you get purpose, if you make your God meter higher, you go into God deeper. In that extracted material is the purpose of every human being under the sound of my voice. Outside of that material, you never find purpose. That's why other people think they're prostitutes. Other ones think they're this, they're that. Because they lack purpose because they have derailed from that material of which they were created. Five. Every product must answer to its creator. Every product. That's the laws of creation. Six. No product can ever discover purpose independent of its creator. Every product. You are a product of God here. You can't discover purpose independent of God. You will struggle until you find I'm rushing through. I don't have time to explain all of them. But in the book, you're gonna, you'll see much more of them in the explanation. Seven. Do I have this in the book? I don't think so. This portion. Maybe I don't know. But anyway. Creators influence the rules, characteristics, and behavior of their creation. Number eight, there is a relationship between the creator and their creation. If this laptop says, or if your car, let's use your, your, you know, you've got maybe a Toyota or something. If the Toyota says, I don't want, I don't believe Toyota created me. I don't believe I must go there for service. I don't believe, if it breaks that relationship, that Toyota will die and it will lose all its purpose. Its purpose is in the fact that it's got a relationship with the factory that created it. Amen? Are you hearing me? Okay. All right. Now, let's go to the, um, to the second law, which is very important. I don't have time for this. You reap what you sow, not what you desire. That's the second law of prosperity. Very, very, very important law. Do you have my picture um, I gave you from, from um, if you don't mind, just, I know it's up and down here, but I want to show you a photo. This is my, my garden. Can you see it? It's, it's, it's my greenhouse there at home. I'm planting here, please. You know, don't, don't look at me like that. <laughs> so I'm busy planting. I took this photo here of what I'm planting. I've got tomatoes. I've got other hooters. The other hooters in these little empty ones, yeah, you saw. These empty ones, it's a different type of seed I put in them. So even though some of them have come out, but this particular seed has not come out because every seed has got a different germinating period, depending on the seed. So now, whatever is coming out of this soil is actually what I sowed. Listen to me very carefully. I have to teach you this next week. Everybody sitting here today, everything you're experiencing today is not a mistake. It's something that you planted, it could be years ago, and you are reaping it today, and you think it's a mistake. There is no mistake on earth. Whatever you receive is a result of what is planted. But because we are not taught, we think it's the devil. When Eve was kicked out of the garden, it wasn't a mistake. The eating was the sowing of the wrong fruit. When she sowed the wrong food in her body, that resulted to the banishing, a harvest of being banished out of the garden. So if you don't understand these principles I'm teaching you now, that you reap what you sow, not what you desire. You might desire to be wealthy here. You might desire to help the church. You might desire to build buildings for the church. But if you don't understand the movement of these laws... Your desire will end as a desire, a hopeless, idle, never manifesting into nothing desire. Because we think it's up to God. God, please, Father, if only God can. God has already done everything. Because we, we approach church, we've been taught this, we approach church from a begging our prayers are begging, please, please, see people lying on the ground. Please, please, please. Kuluma, kulum, kulum, kuluma, please. So we are coming from that perspective. So we think it's God like this in heaven. Doesn't want to hear. Then somebody comes with a hit song. Knock, knock, knocking on the heavens, though. 
Oh, I feel like knocky, knock, knock, knocky. And so we think we want to go there. We are banging God's door because somehow God is sitting on a chair having a glass of juice and not even paying attention that we are on the door. So we have to keep on knocking that door until we break it down for God to hear us. That is wrong teaching. God is willing and forever they're wanting to bless you, wanting to answer you. But what you don't know will hurt you. Stop listening to them songs. What your girl don't know won't hurt her. You know, this is all lies. What you don't know oh, will kill you dead, believe you me. But the teachings over the church has been to make people feel better so that I can have a big church. Listen to me, I'm not looking for a big, it's not even my intention. You show me an attitude. You will see me on Instagram, I'll be there in Dubai with Pastor Lee taking photos there by the sand beaches. Because I'm not doing it for money. I don't need money from people. I'm teaching you the kingdom message. If you don't buy to the kingdom message, you will struggle in a church. You think it's the church. So you're going to look for encouragement. If I can get the pastor coming from there, this guy is so powerful. Why? Because he speaks loud. I said, so this pastor is so powerful. You must listen to him. Then I listened. God said, let me tell you something. It's not in the noise. Power is not in noise. Have you noticed that when you go to your doctor, the guy doesn't do this. What's wrong? He lays you on the bed. He goes, let's see what's going on here. Put a stethoscope. He goes to the other side. What's happening here? And he does this. And who eats you here? And I'm boom. And I'm, ah! Says, okay, <laughs> you've got bronchitis. <laughs> you will be scared if you do that. They all let you in. They're like our doctor's really nice guy, Mr. Maraj. You go there. And, uh, you know, he you know, said, how are you, Lizzo? How are you doing? Uh, fine things, Doc. And they say, um, okay, um, uh, take a seat here a little bit. You know, he takes their little gloves there, puts them on there. He goes there on the side there, takes his whatever hooters thingy. He comes there so quiet, he doesn't talk. And he puts their thing, just listens there. there. Then he says, okay, it's fine. You can sit over there. He writes the script. Knowledge is power. Listen, my people. Let's no longer look. We need to be taught. This is a class to teach you about heaven. Next week, we start a new series about how to reign on this planet. Not a new series, a new law. It's so vital. Because next year, God said to me, next year is going to be a year of supernatural increase for people. But the people have to learn. Otherwise, we keep on getting these things about a year. A year of breakthrough. How many of you told the years of breakthrough? Now at the end of the year, you're looking forward to the breakthrough next year. <laughs> because you never broke through this year. You can't wait. I can't wait for the year to end, Pata. But you said, you said to me in 2022, I can't wait for the year to end, Pata. Now, Pata again, Pata, yeah, Pata, Pata. But it's not going to be 2035. And now it's 2052. All the teeth are gone. Pata, I can't wait for the year to end. You can't even see Pata. No, God doesn't want that. God wants you to learn. I heard Sia Colisi say this. He says, I couldn't tackle. And Rasi Erasmus taught me how to tackle. Because Rasi met Colisi when I was still in school. He says, I didn't know how to tackle. So they actually told me and said, this is how you tackle. It is not just about running and banging people in rugby. You think it's just having power. You'll be, if you go there once, I don't care how big you are. They bang you once, you'll be lying on a stretcher. You have to understand how to tackle. Teaching is vital. You are in a class talking about the kingdom of God to reign in the kingdom. Please, stop being those people. If you're looking for excitement, you're in the wrong place. Here, I'll teach you and you succeed. Amen. You'll be like a doctor making money just putting those little gloves on. Knowledge is power. But the sangoma is struggling because it's making a lot of noise. Throwing all them bones and <laughs> I see something walking on. And nobody wants to go to that guy. Nobody. And the guy can't even afford shoes. He ain't got no shoes. He's got no shirt. Every single guy's got no shirt. He's got no shoes. He's got that thing he wears. No shirt, no shoe. Oh, 
will make you money. He makes you nothing. It's like he wants your money. If you can have knowledge, you don't need no sang or mass. Somebody put something on your tie. You need the knowledge of God. You can become successful. Hallelujah. Someone said, there's a snake. There are no snakes that makes you money. Because Luna has got many snakes. I can give you a snake to go in the bush here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's look for snakes. We can pick up snakes within your house. See if it can make you money. Ain't no snakes making nobody money. It's people lying to you. You need to kill this person like that dude who was caught with body parts last week. We're out of time. Please get up on your feet. <laughs>